So, uh, Dr. Stone happened, and boy was I not prepared. Okay, so I started just reviewing Ty's Eye on the channel, and I didn't, I stopped reviewing Stone, because I realized we were in the we were in the middle of a very pivotal arc in Stone. And I'm just like, you know what, I will let the Petrification arc finish, I will come back to it, and honestly, there's some wild stuff that I could have been reacting to, but I just wanted to wait, I just wanted to wait, because I knew it was going to end soon, but it just kept hitting me with fact after fact after fact after fact after fact. Bro, Dr. Stone is definitely, especially seeing where Ty's is going right now, is definitely my favorite, like, constantly releasing manga that at least I'm reading week by week and keeping up with. Just because, like, it just keeps blowing your mind when you don't even expect it to. So, I honestly have so much to go with this video, I hope it isn't too, too long. But basically, the entire petrification arc ended with twist after twist after twist. So they released Hyoga, you know, the traitor who almost murdered Tsukasa, almost killed Senku. They released him, he fought against Mozu, the strongest warrior on the island, and initially, he was barely tying Mozu, because Mozu was just pure power and amazing, but then he was just like, haha, I got my pipe spear, I'ma dominate you, and then they fight, and then Mozu loses, and then we get this whole thing where they actually have a mutual respect for one another now, because they're just like, you know, you're a pretty strong warrior, you could be better if you learn modern martial arts and stuff like that. And Mozu, who used to believe that like just power was everything and that it didn't really matter, natural talent is all you could have, you couldn't train to be any better, you were just born great or you weren't, learned the hard lesson that no, training can make you a whole lot better. So Mozu had an arc and so did Hyoga for respecting Senku and his people and working alongside them. They both got that, they were petrified and a big thing I have to note is they are kind of just left there. We never got an answer to if they got on petrified or not there's still just two statues and while mozu may be loyal to soyuz i highly doubt it and i know hyoga won't be so something tells me we're gonna return to that island sometime in the future and it's gonna be taken over or something like that or it's gonna be in a constant war state because there, there's, there's no way you leave two of the most physically powerful characters in the verse like i think like the only character that's better fighter than them is Sukasa speaking of but yeah i i feel like that was a detail they left on purpose then we have this whole this guy i don't even i don't remember his name because there's so many characters in dr stone i don't surprise how many i do know he looks like a sukasa clone he just has the crescent moon on his head and apparently according to him the petri the petrification device kind of just fell out of the sky one day a whole bunch of them did and that has me wondering and worried and confused and intrigued like did Whew, there's just so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. And then, um, the old man, Ibarra. Ibarra. I think he was great. I think he was a great villain. Like, he, he was not only a physical threat, surprisingly enough, for a man of his age, but he was also such, like, a strong mental combatant that you don't, that you never really got to see. Because admittedly, Hyoga was smart. Sukasa, to a degree, was smart. All the previous people that Sukasa has gone up against were smart people but they weren't like built-in manipulators like power was their first answer like you can't beat me in a fight in the stone age without a gun or something like that i rule over you and you can't really do much about it but ibarra was just like uh okay y'all got your modern magic or science or whatever you call it but i'm kind of smart though and he he tricks kirisame petrifies her he works his way all around he's he's basically manhandling the entire cast he tricks them all into chasing the guy who supposedly has a petrification device he tricks him into eating it he gets everyone paralyzed that forces senku to work out and figure out when the best time to throw the the um revival fluid on top of himself he work that works out ibarra comes up they fight over the petrification device they work together on that the fight just goes back and forth back and forth and then ibarra just barely loses because he got outplayed by Senku one last time because he broadcasted the command into the petrification device through the earring that Ryusi had on him that he threw towards Ibarra so the petrification device would activate on him. Bro, honestly, an amazing arc. I like the way it concluded. A little bit worried about that island, though. I think something's going to mess up with that. But let's get to modern Dr. Stone, or like current Dr. Stone, since that arc ended a few chapters back. Um, Sukasa's back. Sukasa's back. And that is absolutely 
terrifying. And the reason I say this, I know Sukasa is technically reformed. He went through his arc with Sentaku and stuff like that. But we're back to the point where Sukasa is the most powerful person there. And in a heartbeat, even with, especially with Dr. Stone dead, the petrification device is dead. Like they don't, they, that one has no more power. They have no idea how to really restore it. And Sunku isn't really focusing on that. He just put that to the side. Sukasa is back and he could instantly heal turn. And I don't think anyone could stop him because we already saw that Mozu, who was an inferior combatant to Hyoga, who isn't, who we've seen is an inferior combatant to Mozu. No, who is an inferior combatant to Sukasa was able to like avoid and outmaneuver the gun that weak excuse for a gun that yo carries so sukasa rolls around he heel turns and everybody dying so i'm a little bit worried about that but i do think that he he's fully turned i think he's i think he's good now. i think he's part of the team he pulled a he pulled a modern shonen villain he pulled a vegeta or a piccolo or whatever so he's back and that's amazing i love how senku like everyone is freaking out like ah oh, maybe we shouldn't revive him so quickly he could still be a threat yada 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 and senku's just like nah bro we need some manpower and that is the definition of power of man real quick and he just pours it on them they use the last of the energy to revive sukasa so now they are they have limitless revival fluid but they don't have limitless healing so they're at this juicy impasse that's when senku and then we, and hold on and then we get the message the message of petrify the entire earth and it's coming from senku's voice and a lot i don't i'm not sure what the reaction in the community was to this i don't know i'm not really an active part of the dr sun community but i know when that chapter first dropped i'm just like okay so you're trying to fake me out but i know that there actually isn't an evil senku or something like that and then ukio i think that's his name sonar guy he is quite literally just like hold on i listen to it again it's constantly repeating as a synthetic voice because Senku transmitted something over radio waves. So that means that someone got a copy of his voice and they're using it against them right now. And Senku's just like, ooh, intriguing. And then they triangulate the signal where it's coming from and it's coming from the moon. Now, that is, ooh, now when I'm talking about jumping a shark, when Senku said, we're going to the moon. I was just like, whoa, we are really going that far, my guy. Like, the shark was back there in the ocean. Are we seriously jumping up straight to the moon? So I was concerned when I initially first heard that. But then, Senku told me the actual plan. I was just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So we're not going crazy, crazy. So the plan is, Rai Sukasa, have the most strong, the most powerful warrior, blah, blah, blah. Gather everyone together, and then go and it's time to restore the world. We may not have a petrification device anymore. We may not have infinite healing, but it's obvious we aren't going to be able to build a rocket ship just by ourselves. We're going to go all around the world. We're going to go on a grand tour to the entire world and bring everybody back. Now, that is extremely risky and extremely dangerous as I forget who points it out in the chapter. They're just like, uh, but didn't we already hit like that limit of humans that could live together without conflict? And... I think it was Chrome that brought up like, uh, but what if some bad guys are mixing with the revival? And I love how Sukasa just like, it'll be fine. And everyone's just like, oh, I don't know. And then <laughs> Sukasa's just like, it'll be fine. And everyone's just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we won't have to worry. We still have the world's strongest man. So I like that. Um, but what I'm also wondering is so they're going to america first that's that's the big reveal like they're going to america to make corn so they can make buckets on buckets on buckets of the revival fluid and i'm i'm still wondering like and they're and they're going all the way across the pacific this isn't some like small journey that they made in terms of like the petrification island they went they're going all the way across the pacific straight to california and i'm honestly wondering are there gonna be more people i don't think i don't think there can be because the whole reason there are even humans around in this modern stone age is because of senku's stepdad adoptive father and all his crew coming to earth and having kids and yada 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 and gene diversity and stuff like that and they all existed in that in their island having to split years upon years upon years ago 
And that's why there are people around. So I feel like America's going to be a wasteland. And I feel like it's going to be interesting to see what, how the environment has changed over time. Because that's one of my favorite things about Dr. Stone is that they take fully into account the 3,700 years. Everything is completely changed. Whole massive world-changing events like eruptions and world shifting and climate change being reversed and stuff like that and natural fauna repopulating and all that crazy stuff all of that is just completely possible and i who knows did the yellowstone volcano erupt sometime in the 3700 years i know i know some volcano erupted in the Byaki aside story i know like ray mentioned that but i don't think i think that was just the one in Japan, I don't think they ever mentioned the rest of the world. So I'm wondering, what is going to hold people back? Because even if they go around reviving a whole ton of people, they obviously aren't taking everyone on the ship with them. So they're going to have to rebuild the cities organically. And humanity still going to have to start over by stage one, no matter how many people they revive. So, and they have to establish a whole new law system. That's something mentioned. Like, the challenges that are going to come with this. And the fact that we already have, we really do have our end goal. Our end goal is getting to the moon. And figuring out who Y Man is, why they created the petrification device, and why they fell from the sky. Like, there's so many questions brought up now that we need to figure out. And we also gotta wonder uh, so there has to be humans on the moon, right? Because assuming Y Man is the same person who cast the petrification glow across the earth the first time, then that has to mean that either A, why man's immortal or b why man had kids and those kids are living on the moon and that's why there's still someone up there able to manipulate voices and stuff like that and still try to cast the petrification ray all over again because it's oddly specific that 3700 years has passed and this why man is still chilling up there in the moon so i feel like the moon once we once we finally get there i don't think we're gonna get there for a long time to be completely honest i don't we may get to like chapter 300 before even like the first panel on the rocket ship is built because as senku illustrates it's going to be a big task just crossing the ocean not to talk of going out there rebuilding establishing civilization and then uniting them all against this one threat that is why man because for all we know it could just happen again and no one will be ready for it because that's the, that's the constant ticking clock when it comes to um, Y-Man and Dr. Stone. Someone set off the initial petrification ray. So what's to say that, no, that Y-Man, who knows there are humans around, obviously radio waves are coming through and stuff like that. Senku's voice was manipulated. Who's to say that Y-Man doesn't send another petrification device down, down and sends a command and suddenly that's it. And some, we're all the way back to square one. There's that constant looming fear in the background that comes from the petrification ray and why man and that technically man he's definitely on a time limit even if because they're smartest man right now Senku while he is like only 18 or something like that he still has a limited time to live who knows how long it's going to take him to gather resources build the rocket travel around the world unite government stuff like that we don't know how long is Sukasa going to stay in his peak prime how long how dangerous is the Y Man? Because if you if he has the petrification device, it's very likely that he has guns or some advanced weaponry or something. So I th I love where Doctor Stone's going right now. I'm gonna be reading week by week. I'll probably this is probably a consistent. Oh, I'm gonna review this every single week because I'll give Doctor Stone this when where a lot of other manga fail. Each chapter of Doctor Stone will typically leave you asking a question. Or will give you answers to a question that you've been asking beforehand. And there will always be something to talk about when you're reading Dr. Stone. Which can be lacking in terms of other anime and manga. Where sometimes just a chapter is just a chapter. Like in Demon Slayer right now. Uh, there's not there's not much to talk about. I don't, I don't know. Because some, sometimes they just run out of things to talk about. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to keep this short. This is, this is it. But for man, Dr. Stone... You're doing good. You're doing good. All right, keep it. Keep it up. Keep it up. You're 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 on a roll right now. I think. I don't think there's even a single bad arc in Doctor Stone. That may be a wild thing to say, but I don't think there has been. 
But as once again, that's just my opinion. If give me your own in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think about these chapters. Tell me what you think about the arc. If you're reading Doctor Stone along with me or you're just listening to my reviews, bro, tell me what you think in the comments. Leave a like or a dislike if you like the video. Uh, if you leave a dislike, please just slide into the comments and tell me why you didn't like it. If you leave a like, slide into the comments and tell me why you did like it. And if you really want to go the extra mile, you want to see these Dr. Stone reviews that are going to be coming out week after week after week and all the other content I do, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to make sure that you get my videos, considering YouTube may just say, hey, you know what, Dr. Stone review, let's not. Nope. Hit that little notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated. We're on the grind. I honestly, I haven't said this goal before, but by the end of this year, I want to have at least 100 subscribers. At least 100 subscribers. I'd love to have more, but I'm trying to be realistic with myself. I want 100 subscribers by the end of this year, so it'd be great if you saw this video and you just click subscribe. But that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. And this is That Goth Pencil, writing off.